Hey everyone, Mark here. Welcome to my kitchen. Today we're gonna use goat cheese in a pasta dish. Yeah, goat cheese. It usually comes in a log like this uh, in the grocery store. Now, if you're unfamiliar with goat cheese or you're just goat cheese in a pasta dish, stick around, it's delicious. Now, goat cheese, not everyone's favorite because it has a distinct flavor. It's creamy, it's buttery, it's tart and tangy. Um, so I understand why you might not like it. I know my mom doesn't. Uh, so if you don't like goat cheese, you can use a mascarpone or even a cream cheese as a substitute. But hey, give it a try. You might like it. It might become your new favorite dish. So let's make some pasta. All right, so we're gonna start with half of a sweet onion and we're just gonna finely chop that up. And then finely slice or chop up one or two garlic cloves, whatever floats your goat. Onto the fresh basil, I have eight grams, which is about 10 leaves for me of varying sizes. Stack up the leaves on top of each other and then roll it up like a cigar and thinly slice into ribbons. This is also known as a chiffonade. Next is the spinach. I have 150 grams of fresh spinach. Now trimming the stems is optional, so whatever floats your goat. Finally chop it up and just set aside. For the goat cheese, we're gonna use 200 grams worth. But if you wanna use more, go right ahead, whatever floats your goat. All right, is this joke getting old? Probably, I shouldn't have even gone with it. Don't quote me wrong though, it's a terrible joke, but whatever, I'm doing whatever floats my goat. Lastly, finally grate 30 grams of Parmigiano Reggiano. Now let's get cooking. In a pan on low to medium heat, add three tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil and the onions. Saute until the onions have softened, and then we're gonna add the garlic, chili flakes for some heat, and season with salt and freshly cracked pepper. And then we're gonna add one or two, or even three tablespoons of unsalted butter, whatever floats your goat. Okay, I'm done, for real. I'm not bringing this up again. Bring the heat down to low and add the goat cheese and let it slowly melt as we get the pasta cooking. Stir the goat cheese mixture occasionally as it begins to melt. Salt a large pot of boiling water and add the rigatoni and cook until just before al dente because we're gonna finish cooking it in our sauce. The goat cheese by now should have melted, but if not, don't worry, it will when the pasta is added. Add a ladle of pasta water to the pan and then the pasta. And now it's time for la manticatura, mixing and tossing to form our sauce. Adding more pasta water as needed. Then we're gonna add the spinach, mix and toss until it has wilted down. Grab a nice wedge of lemon and squeeze the juice all over and give a mix and toss. And now we're gonna remove the pan from the heat or turn off the heat and add the Parmigiano Reggiano a handful at a time, mixing and tossing. If you feel like the sauce is too loose, the cheese is gonna help thicken up that sauce. And if you want the sauce a little bit looser, just add a little bit more pasta water. Then we're gonna plate it up, top with some more sauce and freshly cracked pepper and bring it to the table. It's creamy and buttery, and of course, tart and tangy, which is what you get with goat cheese. That's what makes it so distinct in flavor and so well-liked by the people that like it. So I hope you give this a go. And as always, the full recipe is in the description below. Please like and comment. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, ciao.